but what's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite for another video here for you guys tonight. We're going to be talking about a massive update regarding DMZ and Warzone 2, a review from PlayStation, and even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold War Year 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Also, be sure to check out my partner Manscapes. They recently released their best package yet with the Lawnmower 4.0. You can use this trimmer to get a clean shave in those hard-to-reach places when your significant other is isn't around to help. The package features the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer with a 90 minute battery, the Weed Whacker trimmer for your nose and ears, the Crop Reserver deodorant, and even the Crop Reviver toner. You also get some free gifts like the boxer briefs and a really nice travel bag. But be sure to use code TWITCH20 to get 20% off all orders at manscaped.com. The link is of course down below in the description. But fun fact for you guys, the Dark Water campaign game that they released for Modern Warfare 2 actually takes place on October 22nd, which is very close to when the early access begins for the campaign on October the 20th. So my question for you guys is, was that date planned all along to be something special? Apparently something similar happened at some point in 2019 with the other Modern Warfare, where I think the actual campaign takes place on the exact release date of that game as well. So I think this is interesting, right? I am hoping that early access to a campaign for Call of Duty is a thing that's here to stay moving forward. Hopefully see this for Black Ops 2024, other installments in the future. I do wonder though, how severe the leaks are going to be when this early access is released. Hopefully there's a way to avoid having some much information about multiplayer spec ops or anything like that in the files of the early access campaign because it would be a shame if a week before the game comes out so many important things end up getting spoiled which will better be saved for some surprise marketing in the future now in case you guys missed it we got a confirmation that if you pre-order Modern warfare 2 you will also end up getting the khaled al-assad operator pack for free if you don't pre-order the game you can still buy the pack flat out for maybe 2400 cod points not sure of the exact price just yet similar to the ghost of war bundle that came out last year from pre-ordered vanguard you would then get access to that pack within Cold War and Warzone 1. But more information about the MW2 story was provided in the description for Khaled Al-Assad where they finally name drop Makarov. So it looks like this is our first official mention of this character in the brand new rebooted Modern Warfare timeline. So it's unclear if he'll have a cameo towards maybe the end of the game's campaign. Could even be sooner than that. Maybe he'll play a larger role in the post-launch story that we get for Modern Warfare 2 over the course of maybe two years. Seasons 1 through 12 maybe. Or maybe they'll set up an actual Modern Warfare 3, which ends up coming out many, many years from now. It's, of course, unknown, but some of you guys might have also missed in the recent game that leaked out by Call of Duty. Of course, the video was codenamed Strike. Not sure why that was the case, but you can actually hear somebody that sounds like Peter Cullen, who voices Optimus Prime, who may, in fact, be the new voice of General Shepard. Now, there were rumors about somebody else voicing Shepard, as reported by Ralph's Valve many months ago, but I honestly think that sounds like Peter Cullen. And like you guys were saying in the comments of the short that I posted about this a uh, good 24 hours, ago, you guys were saying that the only respectable recast for Shepard is definitely Peter Cullen. I mean, such an iconic voice that would fit so perfectly in a game like Modern Warfare 2. Now, do you guys remember when Ralph's Valve claimed that Craig Fairbrass, the original voice actor of Ghost from MW2, was returning to voice the character yet again in the new Modern Warfare 2? Well, that obviously got debunked, but then Ralph followed up by saying that Craig apparently is still going to play a role in this new Modern Warfare 2. Maybe there'll be a voice pack with classic voice lines at some point in the future. That's if you want to believe him or not, but there's another claim that he made, which now seems to be false, which is that another voice actor by the name of Warren Cole, I believe his name is, is set to be voicing Shepard in the new Modern Warfare 2. That tweet also got deleted, so I'm curious if this is something that maybe now he realizes wrong and took it down. I, I mean, it's unclear what happened, but this is exactly why I tell you guys to be very careful with trusting any insider or journalist on Twitter. Now, I do believe Warren Cole could be playing somebody in Modern Warfare 2. I mean, it looks like according to IMDB is going to be in the game but in terms of who he's playing it is still unknown. So there's definitely some big shoes to fill when it comes to this upcoming Call of Duty. I'm very curious how they're going to kind of reinvent the character of Shepard, Makarov, and who knows about other characters that may even pop up that we just don't know about yet. Now here's the breaking news at the time of recording this video. So Warzone 2.0 has been rated M by the ESRB and in the description of Warzone 2 it mentions Battle Royale, Plunder Scout Skirmishes slash DMZ which is in fact our first official mention for Mac division about the rumored DMZ mode, which apparently NFL players were also getting their hands on a couple of weeks ago, as the image that I put on screen does suggest. But considering Warzone 2 is now rated M, I do wonder if this means we'll end up getting at least a logo reveal or a picture of Warzone 2 from at some point this week before the COD Next event. It's already confirmed we're going to get a reveal of Warzone 2 at that event, which I cannot wait to attend, but maybe they'll drop something small before that. I think that would be interesting. And for those that were maybe doubting this, MW2 is also rated M for mature as 
every other Call of Duty has been. But let's read that description by the ESRB. So this is a first person shooter set in the Call of Duty universe in which players engage in a variety of multiplayer combat events. So we have Battle Royale, Plunder style skirmishes. I'm wondering if that's some type of new variation of Plunder that we have from Warzone 1. And then DMZ. Players use machine guns, shotguns, snipers, and explosives to kill enemy soldiers in frenetic combat. So for those that may have doubted that weapons will be in Warzone 2, we are getting weapons in this experience. Battles are highlighted by realistic gunfire, screams of pain, blood splatter effects, and explosions. A handful of weapons slash attacks result in decapitation slash dismemberment. God. Finishing moves sometimes depict dramatic stabbings and headshots with close-up blood and gore effects. The game contains badges and banners that depict illustrations of marijuana leaves and or characters smoking joints. The words F and crap appear in the game. I'm not going to say the words, but maybe we're going to get some type of weed tracer packs or some 420 celebration again at some point. I mean, something like that could even happen before Warzone 2 even comes out within the first couple of weeks of MW2 releasing, and then they'll then be usable throughout Warzone 2. If not, then maybe they have some future plans to release stuff like that, and that's why they're mentioning it here in the Warzone 2 description. But it honestly makes sense that DMZ is mentioned here with the Warzone 2 description, considering rumors already suggested it, we're going to be playing on the Warzone 2 map when you're doing missions in DMZ. I never really thought otherwise. I know there were rumors from like the Ghost of Hope and other scoopers that apparently DMZ has its own set of maps in development in which you'll do missions on. Maybe that's something for the post-launch. Maybe that's something for year two. But I think with the launch of all these projects, we're going to be reusing the same map for Warzone 2 and DMZ, possibly even small portions of the Warzone 2 map for Spec Ops missions, which we're just not sure about yet but the big thing you guys probably didn't even think about is that this means dmz will be loadable through the warzone 2 application i think there's been plenty of confirmation already that warzone 2 will be separate from modern warfare 2 to avoid the same issues that we had many years ago and still to this day with warzone 1 being attached to the modern warfare 2019 application so it looks like october 28th should bring us the official launches of campaign multiplayer and then spec ops three modes and then dmz is going to be something that's tied to the warzone 2 app that probably also comes out day one with with Warzone 2 on November the 16th. Now, I think this is great that DMZ is separate from the core launch of Modern Warfare 2, because if it wasn't, then launch would be pretty hectic. I mean, at least we have campaign early access so that when the game comes out, you can focus more on your mastery camels for multiplayer or hop into spec ops. But if DMZ would have been available on October 28th, that would have been a lot to juggle if I had to guess in terms of content or in terms of just casually sitting down and playing and not knowing where to start first. But the description for Modern Warfare 2 by the ESRB also contains some interesting information here. So as it says, this is a first-person shooter in which players assume the roles of special forces, units, and members pursuing terrorist threats. Players engage in combat missions. So we have stealth, skirmishes, extractions using machine guns, snipers, knives, and grenades to kill enemy soldiers or combatants. Combat is frenetic, highlighted by realistic gunfire, explosions, cries of pain, and blood splatter effects. One sequence depicts captured soldiers tied to chairs while being interrogated. Captors may aim and shoot a pistol directly at the camera slash character's face. So a bit of a teaser for some of the very realistic war like elements we're going to end up seeing as expected here in Modern Warfare 2. Finishing moves to pick characters stabbed repeatedly or shot in the head at close range. Blood and gore effects often accompany these sequences. A red light district depicts neon signs with female figures advertising live sex theater. Other signs reference lingerie, fetish, SMN costumes. During multiplayer events, players can use badges slash banners on their name cards. Some of which depict cannabis leaves, joints, and her smoking figures. The words effing crap appear in the game. Wondering if some of those uh, strip clubs are going to be included in like the Chicago mission that we're apparently going to have in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. But there you have another behind the scenes type description of the upcoming story. Now we also have some other breaking news. Sony has officially confirmed that PSVR 2 is set to release in early 2023. And there was no doubt in my mind that it was going to come out after the holidays. I think this fall they're focusing on other things and priorities and game releases. And then early 2023, we're going to have some other major launches that hopefully are well polished for the PS5. The reason I bring this up not only is because I'm excited for PS5, VR 2, which hopefully I'll get my hands on at some point. I would love to cover that for you guys more on the second channel or something, but there has been a rumored Modern Warfare 2 project set for PSVR 2. I think we'll end up getting another showcase or state of play event, which might end up confirming this Call of Duty-like integration with PSVR. And it's unclear to what extent Modern Warfare 2 will have PSVR 2 support. I do think it'll be an exclusive mode, maybe just one mission, something along those lines, unless they have some full integration where you can play the entire campaign in VR. That would be fantastic. I think it's going to be great to see Call of Duty kind of make a return to VR again, since we really haven't seen much VR support in recent years. We had that campaign mission or that campaign DLC add-on for Infinite Warfare, and that's really been about it. I mean, there were rumors that Treyarch had some big plans for VR support. That never really went anywhere. I know we have the 
custom zombies type experiences like Call of the Dead and Kino that are available on, I think, Oculus and PC-related VR projects. But to see PlayStation have a Call of Duty VR experience again would be fantastic. And if anything, if Sony has to have exclusivity in any way, shape, or form with upcoming Call of Duty projects, hopefully it's kind of just kept at a minimum with VR projects and not anything crazy like what we got with Survival and MW2019, Onslaught and Cold War. We'll have to wait and see. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. Bit of a quick video talking more about the breaking news with Warzone 2, DMZ, the reveal from PlayStation. I'm very excited about all this. Leave all your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.